one of the traps that I used to fall into was thinking that if I suffered today and worked really, really hard and did all this stuff, then in the future I could have this better life. Driven mofos, welcome back to another episode of the Underestimate Entrepreneur. Now, before I get started, I'm back in Adelaide. I am pumped. I've got my podcast set up, so the audio quality is just going to be better. Yeah, oh, it's good to be home. I love traveling, but good to be home. Anyway, I want to give a massive shout out to all of the people out there who are on my mid-level coaching program who are dropping weight, feeling better. You all know who you are. I went back in, I checked out, making sure everyone's on track this month. And it's absolutely awesome to see so many of you losing weight, eating better, being more strict with your habits, and just feeling better about yourself. Like That's the main thing is you've got to feel good about you. And it's just great to see so many people who have taken that opportunity and who just want to better themselves. Like That's the key. And so today, what I really want to talk about is this myth and this delusion that most people have. And I bought into it for 40 years of my life. And that is thinking that something in the future is going to make me feel better about the way that I live, the way that I operate and who I am as a person. And it's just not true. So, you know, when I was younger growing up, I don't know where this started from. And part of this all came up as a self-reflection during my time away in both Singapore and Bali. And I was just really thinking about the way that I was living. And what would happen would be I'm focusing on business growth. And by focusing on business growth, I want to bring in more people into the community. I want to grow the podcast. I want to be in the US doing more speaking engagements. And so I'm focusing on these future goals. And then my alarm would go off in the morning and I wake up straight away and I go, shit, I got all this stuff to do. And so straight away, I'm focusing on all this stuff that I have to do throughout the day. And then I would plow through the day, but I was always thinking about either something in the future or something in the past. And very rarely was I present. Very rarely was I enjoying my life that day. Now, I could be like most people and say, oh, yeah, well, you know, I sort of enjoy what I do. I do. I love what I do. Like, I love this shit. I wouldn't do the podcasting. I wouldn't do all this stuff if I didn't really enjoy it. But most of my day, I wasn't really enjoying because I wasn't really present. I was thinking about the future, like, oh, I've got to make more money. I've got to get more cash flow in. I've got to onboard more clients. I've got to get all this stuff done. And that got to was really something that kept pushing me out of feeling good and present in the moment. Now, while I was away, I was thinking about this and going, am I really fulfilled in life? Now, if you've listened to my podcast before, you know that I think happiness is a shit metric because my alarm went off this morning at 5 a.m., I probably didn't get to sleep until probably about one o'clock last night just because of, you know, my body getting back into the swing of things. You know, my alarm went off at five. Now I work for myself, so I could go back to sleep for another two hours if I felt like it. But I didn't feel like it. I was like, nope, this is what life is about. It's about being disciplined. It's about making sure that I know that I control my brain, not letting my brain control me. This is about sticking to my word. So the 5 a.m. wake up time isn't just about me getting up whenever I feel like it or getting up at 5 a.m. It's all about me building myself. So I got out of bed, came downstairs, had my coffee, did my coffee post, chucked up my Instagram like I normally do when I'm back at home. So in Bali, what I started realizing was that I was thinking about these future goals, these future things that I had to focus on and not really focusing on just enjoying moments throughout my day. And when I think about it, I love posting on social media because I know that there are some of you out there, not everybody, some of you out there have come across my social media and gone, wow, this is something that has helped me. And so posting on social media isn't about me sharing anything really. It's about me showing what can happen if you just change yourself. It's not about changing anything else. It's about changing yourself. It's about looking in the mirror and saying, I can be better, I can do better, but I have to change something about me today. So doing those posts are something that I enjoy because I know that it helps other people. Doing this podcast isn't about me. It's about helping somebody else. There's one of you out there today who's going to have a bit of a revelation that you're going to listen to this episode and just go, you know what, fuck, I need to change something. And that's why I do this podcast. So when I look at my life, I looked at my life as though, have I set up my life in a way where I can do things that I enjoy? And the answer is yes. Do I enjoy the work? Yeah. Do I enjoy exercise? Yeah. Do I enjoy spending time with Jess and being married to Jess? And the answer is yes. Do I enjoy the clients that I have? And the answer is yes. Do I enjoy my community? Yes. 
And so when I went through all of these things that I'm doing, I go, well, what do I enjoy and what don't I enjoy? Now, people tell you that you can remove all these things out of your life. So, you know, the things that you don't enjoy, you should delegate or give off. And I 100% agree with that. But if you're not enjoying them at the moment, you're not going to get to a level where you are going to be able to delegate them. Like if you don't enjoy managing staff and you get pissed off all the time, you see them as being a hindrance, then there is a lack of appreciation. And it is that appreciation that makes things go up in value. So if you want your business to go up in value and you want your staff to be a high quality and you want them to feel appreciated and and them to feel valued and bring value back to the business, then you have to appreciate them today. Even if that means all of their fucking faults, all of their problems, all of the shit that they've got going on, you've got to learn how to appreciate that. So upon reflection, I looked at my life and I went, wow, I've set up my life in this amazing way. Why is it that I go through these stages where I don't enjoy it? And it's always because I'm trying to get somewhere in the future instead of just enjoying the day and letting things happen. You've probably heard the quote before, I can't control the outcome, but I can only control the work that I put in. Now, if you think about the work that you're putting in today, by getting up at a certain time, if you wake up and just go, bang, the alarm goes off and you get out of bed and you're like, cool, I just won. That's it. I just won. I had a winning moment. And then you get in the shower and you do your shower and maybe you have a cold shower. Like you might have a warm shower and then a cold shower. I normally try to have a cold shower unless I'm away in Bali or whatever, because their cold shower is still a warm shower. But in Adelaide in winter when it's cold, I still love having cold showers because it just wakes me up. It vibes me up in the morning. And so, you know, by doing that, that's another win on the board. By just doing little things throughout the day and seeing yourself winning, you realize that you're becoming a better person because you're more dedicated. And what will happen is when you compare yourself to who you were in the past, you realize that you've come so far and you appreciate your life more. When you compare yourself to an ideal which an ideal is like the perfect life. Now, most people don't realize they do this. I've worked with tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands. And I can tell you right now that most people don't realize that they're comparing their life to an ideal. They go, well, when I have more money, then I'll be able to do something. Then I'll be happy. Then I'll feel better. When my partner changes the way they operate and when they just appreciate me all the time and give me this respect and allow me just to do what I want to do, then I'll be happy. If I have more staff and everyone just does what they're supposed to do and I have a proper management team, then I'll be happy. The truth is you're never, ever going to be happy because you're not working on the one thing that matters and that is you. You're not focusing on you and you're not focusing on your mindset. When you focus every fucking day on your mindset and you, you realize that every day you're given an opportunity and test to see whether you really believe that you're worth it. So when you wake up on time and you get straight out of bed and you go have a a shower, and then after that you go down, you might have your breakfast and it's a healthy breakfast. You've already put two wins on the board immediately straight away in the day and you're like, fuck, I'm winning. Then you go to work and you're caught in traffic and you're like, oh, this is fucked. But then you sit there and you're like, you know what? This isn't actually too bad. Like This is actually pretty cool. I get to just sit here, listen to the podcast, listen to the radio, whatever I'm listening to. I just get to enjoy this. I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to stay calm. And you know what? I'm trapped here with everybody else. There's no point worrying about it. And you go, you know what? There's another win because I didn't let my mindset shift and pull me off track. And throughout the day, you just keep putting these wins on the board. At the end of the day, you'll feel like a winner. If you keep comparing the day to some future idealistic version of how things should happen, you're going to be fucked. You're always going to feel like shit. And this is what so many people do. They get up in the morning, the alarm goes off, and they go, oh, i got all this shit to do. Oh, my God. And then they get in the shower, and they drag themselves in there. Then they go downstairs, and they're like, oh, oh i got to just grab some breakfast. I'll just grab something on the run because I'm running late. And then they get in the car, and now they're stuck in traffic. Oh, why the fuck is there traffic here? And so every bit of their day, they feel like they're losing. They go, well, in the future, when I have a manager, the manager can get to work on time, and the manager can get staff working, the manager can deal with these problems. But when you think like that, you're training yourself to think more like that. So something that's really important is that we have to understand that our mindset is the thing that dictates our life. It governs everything. Most people just don't realize this because they don't study it. Do you know the amount of conversations I have with people? They go, oh, I'm trying to grow my business. And I go, work on you. And they go, well, I don't understand how that's supposed to you know, make business better. And I go, okay, why do you want to grow a business? And they go, well, because I want more opportunity. I want more freedom. I want to create something. And I'm like, cool. What's stopping you from feeling like that every fucking day? And they go, well, it's just, I don't have staff. Cash flow's poor. You know what? There's just a lot of shit going on. We need to put in new systems. But when all that happens, then I'll be happy. And I go, you're a fucking idiot. 
Because what happens is when you study neuroscience, you understand that there's a law called Hebb's law. And Hebb's law states that circuits in the brain that fire together, wire together. So every time you fire and wire a circuit, you're creating a habit. So the alarm goes off in the morning and you're like, oh, I've got to get out of bed. Bang, you fire off that circuit. Tomorrow you do the same thing. Bang, you fire off that circuit. And 30 years down the track, you're still firing off that circuit. And so that circuit gets stronger because circuits that fire together, wire together. So they get stronger and stronger and stronger over time. That habit becomes a habit. Now what happens is you're 55 years of age, the alarm goes off in the morning and automatically you just go into some shitty state because you've been doing it ever since you were like 14 years of age. The alarm goes off and you go, oh, I gotta wake up. I gotta get out of bed. I gotta go to work. And then you think that that's gonna change. It's not gonna change because it's gonna take you weeks, if not years to unwire that pattern. So why not start unwiring it today? Most people don't realize that they suffer in life because of the way that they set it up. No one starts a business to be trapped. No one goes and gets a job to have less freedom. You work so that you can have more freedom. You have a business so you can have more freedom, yet most people who have a business and work feel like they're trapped because they compare their day to the idealistic day. Oh, well, when I retire, you fucking idiot. You're a fucking douchebag. You're wasting your life for something that's going to happen when you're 65 or maybe 70 years of age, and I guarantee it's never going to be as good as what you think it's going to be. I've watched plenty of people retire, and it is never as good as what people think. That's why I have no intention of ever retiring. I do not want to retire. I want to set my life up in a way where I do things so I never have to retire. Because the greatest people on the planet set their life up in a way so they never have to retire. They don't retire. And if they retire from a career, let's say it's sport, they retire from that career and they go into another career. So if you have a look at someone like Michael Jordan, he retires from basketball, he goes and buys an NBA team. Okay, He goes and does more work in business. He promotes himself. He's always doing stuff. So he didn't retire. He retired from basketball, but did something straight afterwards. He had something to flow into. That's how you live a great life. So what my point of this episode is, is that you have to set your life up to win. See everything throughout your day as being a way of making yourself better. Problems pop up and you don't react. Hey, I'm winning. Shit goes on at home and you don't break character as in your partner says shit to you that used to trigger you and you don't get triggered. And you're like, hey, I'm winning. And you keep seeing the day as though you're winning. Make sure you book in your gym session. All of a sudden work pops up, more work comes up and you're like, hey, I'm going to the gym right? This is my time. I just need an hour. I'll come back and I'll fix this shit up after. It ain't going anywhere. And you just deal with it and you keep moving on. When you do that and when you live like that, I guarantee you win the day. You win the week, you win the month, you win life. And most people never get there. The amount of people that I've worked with, tens of thousands of people, the majority of those people know that mindset is the key, but the majority of those people still don't execute it effectively enough and surround themselves and put themselves in an environment to have this stuff reminded daily, weekly and monthly in a way where it sets a habit. That's why this podcast is so important because what you're doing is you're listening to things that set a habit. You may have heard this shit a million times before, but if you're not executing it, you haven't heard it enough. And in this day and age, we're in an information age where everybody seems to fucking know everything, but most people don't achieve anything. So you have to ask yourself the question, is it the information that you need more of? Do you need a better strategy? Do you need a better gym program? You know, like if you look at weight loss, weight loss is so simple. Calories in versus calories out. It's scientifically proven over and over and over again. It's calories in versus calories out. Now, are there other factors? Yeah. Like, are there other things like does sleeping help weight loss? And the answer is yes, because it changes certain hormones. So leptin and ghrelin, it can change those hormones. But at the end of the day, it's still calories in and calories out. Those hormones make us feel more hungry or suppress appetite. So by having more sleep, does it make weight loss a little bit easier? Yeah, a little bit. But that still doesn't change. It's calories in versus calories out. So if you want to lose weight, you need to burn more energy than what you consume. Simple. If you put on weight like I just have by being away for three weeks and just not tracking my calories as well as what I should have, have I put on a little bit of weight? Yeah. But at the same time, I'll just drop back. I'll go back into a calorie deficit. I'll strip that off in the next three to four weeks and life will be good. Well, life is already good, but you know, I'll be back down to a little bit less weight. It just makes life a bit easier for me. Things are simple, yet we tend to overcomplicate them because of the information age. People are like, oh, but what about my gut bacteria? Well, what about exercise? Should I be doing cable flies? Is that going to help? I heard that I need to do 5,000 steps a day to burn calories. Well, yeah, it's probably going to help, but at the end of the day, it's calories in versus calories out. It's that simple. Now, if you want to live a better life, it's fucking mindset. That is it. It is your mindset. It is how you train your mind to operate. 
Now, if you're hanging out with a whole bunch of people and you consider yourself a leader, you hang out with a whole bunch of people who whinge, who moan, who complain, who bitch, all of that sort of shit. You're putting yourself in an environment where it's affecting your mindset. Then from there, you're saying, I'm a leader. Yet at the same time, your mind is being consumed or these thoughts and ideas of everybody else is occupying your mind with their negative thinking. When you do that, you're probably not going to lead that effectively. Someone comes into my life and they start complaining about shit. I'm like, wait, stop. We don't do that around here. If there's a problem, we identify the problem. We come up with a solution and then we execute it. We move forward. That's it. I don't want to fucking hear your bullshit. I've got old friends of mine. We catch up and they're like, oh, you know, business is this way and and fucking and no, can't, no one's paying on time and it's just fucked. The industry's fucked. And I'm like, man, you're an idiot. Stop talking that shit. If there is a problem. So let's say the industry is having problems. That is a perfect opportunity to grow and take market share. I love when industries go through chaos because when an industry is shit, the top dogs are always going to shine. Always remember, cream rises to the surface. If you're the cream of the industry, rise to the fucking surface. Show everyone that you're better. Spank them. That's what you want to do. So instead of complaining about it, this here is your opportunity. Remember, leaders see opportunity. Leaders change their mind or work on their mindset because they're the ones who empower others. When my team have doubt, I go in and I make sure that their doubt is removed. So I have sometimes with my team, they're like, we're posting videos on social media and we're not getting traction. And I'm like, hey guys, that's cool. What's not working? Let's go through. Let's figure it out. Okay, what do you think is a better solution? Let's go through. Let's do some research. Let's figure out what the top people are doing and let's figure out how we can adapt. And I pick up their energy because that's what leaders do. Leaders don't fall into the trap of complaining like everybody else. That's poor leadership. And that's what most of you do. That's why your mindset is key. If I'm at home, like if I'm around family or I'm around Jess and Jess is in a negative state, I'll listen to what she has to say. I then change the way she thinks. So if she's complaining about something, I listen for a little bit and I go, cool. I completely understand. Now, normally in an intimate relationship, when you're dealing with feminine energy, there's two reasons why most women will complain. Now, I'm not saying all women complain all the time. Men complain also. But I'm saying that women have two ways of connecting normally. First one is that they connect through talking through things. So sometimes when a woman or female, someone who's feminine, and it could be a male who's feminine, starts talking about problems all the time, it's because they're trying to connect. So if you identify that, so sometimes Jess will complain about something. I go, oh, she's trying to connect. I will listen to her. Then I just give her a cuddle and I go, hey, it's all good. You know, I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you're doing. She feels great again. And then the next second, she just stops complaining. That's because what she really wanted was the connection. You have to identify that as a leader. Again, this is mindset, 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 mindset. If I react like most guys do, and they're like, well, why the fuck are you always talking about your problems and shit? And then you both argue, that's not effective for everybody. So don't do that. So if she wants connection, I give her connection. On the other side though, if she actually has a problem, I'll sit there and I'll listen. I'll say, look, you want to work through this? And she'll say, yes. So I go, cool. What have you tried? What are some solutions that you think might work? So we've identified the problem, we figure out some solutions, and then we go and execute. Bang, she's good again. Again, this comes down to mindset. If you react based on other people, you are not a leader. Leaders don't react when everybody else is reacting. Leaders control the environment. They don't submerge themselves into that environment. They create the environment. So I just don't let people create the environment for me. Right? I create the environment. If I walk into a room, it's my room. It's not everybody else's room. So if people are sitting around drinking beers and shit like that, and they're all talking about how shit everything is, I walk in there, it's my room. And what I mean by that is that when I walk in, people go, do you want a beer? And I go, no, I don't want a beer. And they go, oh, why? Don't you drink? Or you like, whatever. And I'm like, no, I don't really drink. Well, why not? Because I just don't. Has anyone ever said, my life was worse because I haven't drunk? Stupid people say that. And they're like, yeah, but what about the fun? That tells you that you can't have fun without alcohol. That tells you a lot about the individual. Why does an individual need alcohol to have fun? Because their mind is so clouded with self-doubt, shame, guilt, you know, self-resentment, self-loathing, all of these negative thoughts about themselves that when they drink, it gets rid of all those thoughts. Why? Because when we drink alcohol, it is a depressant. It makes us feel more depressed, but it also subdues us. It subdues our thinking a little bit. So the real self comes out. So if you're a fun person when you drink, you're actually a fun person. It's all the other shit that's going on in your head that's stopping you from being fun. When you drink and you get to live your values without self-criticism and self-doubt, that's why you're more fun. You enjoy life more. 
but you don't drink alcohol in the next second, all of those thoughts come in, the self-doubt, and you start self-criticizing and all that shit. If you deal with that stuff, which is, again, working on your mindset, you don't need alcohol. I don't need alcohol because I just deal with that shit. When it comes up, I'm like, ha-ha, you are here. You are in front of me. Let's work through this shit. And that's what I do, is I will work through that stuff. I don't want alcohol to suppress that stuff. That's why I don't drink. And I'm way more effective when I don't drink. When I sit around, I listen to all these people who are drinking, and they're talking, and they're yabbering. They tell me everything about themselves, right? It's obvious. Because I'm not drinking, they're drinking. People say shit when they drink. Okay, also, normally when everyone else is drinking and I'm not drinking and they're all around and they're all running amok and shit, afterwards I get phone calls the next day or the next couple of days and they're like, oh man, sorry if I said something wrong or sorry if I did something wrong, you know, I was a bit out of it that night. I'm like, that's cool. I also know now that you know that I know shit about you, right? And I didn't break character, but you did. So you feel guilty, you feel ashamed, you feel resentment. I don't. So these are all the things that I think through. Like no one has ever said, my life got worse because I stopped using drugs or my life got worse because I use alcohol. No one goes home and says, you know what? I never used to beat my wife when I wasn't drinking. And now I've started drinking. My life is just so much better. Like I just feel so much more at home and relaxed when I'm around my family. Right? People drink and they go home and they hit their partners. People drink and then they go and blow a ton of cash, which then puts them in a financial struggle. People do the wrong thing when they drink. Yet, you know, if you look at inverse thinking, people just don't think through this shit. Like they don't go, like I have people all the time, they're like, oh, well, you know, that life must be boring because you don't drink. I'm like, you reckon? You reckon that my life is boring because I don't drink? I think that you're pathetic because you do drink. Whose life would you rather have? I wake up every day and I enjoy life. You don't because you need alcohol to enjoy it. Now, I know that that's probably hard hitting for some of you and it's going to piss some of you off. That's good. Start thinking about it. Get yourself into my community. Get yourself into my mid-ticket coaching. It's only 750 bucks. 750 bucks for three months per quarter. So 750 bucks, you join the community. I write out your gym program. I give you a nutrition program. We start working on your mindset. We get you into the coaching calls, all of that stuff. And now you can start to become a better person. When you start working on yourself and you start to enjoy you, you enjoy every day and then you win life. Most people just don't get this because everything is clouded by alcohol, drugs, overeating, overspending, and they keep thinking that something else is going to make them feel better. So they have a shit day. They eat which then now makes them feel a little bit better. But all you've done is you've just suppressed that shit that's going on inside your head. If you let that come out and you squeeze it out like toothpaste, eventually you don't need the food anymore. The same thing happens with alcohol or drugs. You know, the amount of people who've come into the community who go out and on weekends they get blasted on coke and, you know, taking drugs and shit or, you know, using pills and then they're drinking alcohol and they go, well, we're having fun. Then they come into my community All of a sudden, we clean up their diet, we clean up their nutrition, we clean up their mindset more than anything. And the next second, they're like, holy shit, I can't believe I didn't do this before. Like, life's just so much better. I'm so much clearer in my thinking. I'm achieving more. I go to the gym more. I'm exercising more. I'm dropping weight. I'm feeling better. I'm heaps more confident. My communication skills are way better. Like, holy shit, life is just way better. The only thing that's going to change that is that they keep going back to the same environment where everyone's doing the same thing, which is drinking or drugs or whatever, and they find it hard to relate. That's why I build a community. That's why this community is just different. Because when you're in this community, we just don't do that shit. Like if you come to my events, people don't go out drinking afterwards. We used to, but we just don't anymore because we don't need to. So anyway, Driven Mofos, the point of this episode was really to start self-reflecting on how you live, how you operate. Because when you work on you, And when you change your mindset, which are the two most important things, change your mindset, change the way you operate as a person, and you do that every day, you are going to win life. And yes, there are going to be some adversities. There's going to be challenges. But when you see it as being fun, like when my alarm goes off in the morning and I don't want to get up, that's where the fun starts because I'm like, ah, ha, ha, motherfucker's testing me. And I have to play that game. I've got to play the game with myself. When I don't want to work out, that's where I start, ah, ha, ha, now let's play. Let's have some fun. Let's see where I break. And some days I do. I definitely do. I'm human. My diet, I definitely break with my diet. I definitely broke when I was on holidays, right? I ate more chocolate. I mean, that's why I'm all sinusy and all blocked up because I'm not supposed to eat whey. I'm allergic to it. 
And so I think just by eating dairy, all my sinuses flared up and shit. And it taught me a valuable lesson to take this shit more seriously. But you know, I'm human. I live and I learn just like you guys. So look, enjoy each day. Work on your mindset. It's the most important thing. For anyone who wants to jump into my mid-ticket program, shoot me a message on Instagram. Shoot me a message and just type in the word coaching and let's have a chat and let's get you into the mid-ticket program. Let's get you start winning. Let's start to build your character. Let's start to build your mindset. Because once you do that, you're going to start crushing it. I guarantee I guarantee life will get better when you start to create empowering habits. And that's what it's all about. Anyway, Driven Mofos, have a great day. Keep winning. Stay on top of your mindset. That's the most important habit you can create. Everybody thinks about habits as being this physical thing. It's not physical. It's a mental thing. Mindset comes first. Emotions come second. Physical habits are third. So if we create the right mindset habits through our thinking, our thinking becomes a habit. So if we have shitty thinking and that becomes a habit over time, then we have shitty emotions over time. If we have shitty emotions over time, then we have shitty physical habits over time or physical actions. So what we've got to do is start working on our mental habits first. Mental habits always come first. So start working on it today, Driven Mofos. Have a great day. Keep kicking ass and I'll see you on the next episode. And remember, shoot me the word coaching in the DMs on my Instagram and let's get you into the program. Let's get you start winning and let's build that mindset. Anyway. I look forward to hearing from you on Instagram. Most people waste their life and I just don't want you to be one of them.